Hello, my name is Calvin Heil. I am in Dr. Bonomo's lab, and the work that I am doing in the lab involves single cell protein sequencing by utilization of amino acid selective chemistries and nanopore sequencing. The overall objective of this work is to determine the amino acid sequence at a single cell concentration using barcoding and nanopore sequencing to map the entire proteoform of a cell. So, we want to look at um, what proteins are inside of a cell as well as the relative concentrations of each other, and we need to be able to sequence these proteins individually to be able to do that. Um, the only issue is current protein sequencing techniques have several drawbacks that prohibit us from being able to do that um, with the mass spec, that is the, the concentration. Um, the, the concentration of the cell is too low to be able to be detected by mass spec. Um, it's important. This is, it works important because proteins can serve as biomarkers for disease, so we'll be able to tell which proteins are inside of a cell to determine which diseases this individual may have. Nanopore sequencing works by detecting a change in current caused by the pore blockage. So this illustration at the bottom demonstrates that as our peptide moves through our nanopore, we get a change in the current um, from one side of the membrane to the other. This can then be inferred by an algorithm to match to a certain amino acid or has already been used previously, uh, DNA base. Uh, this technology has been used widely in DNA sequencing and has been very effective at that. For the previous work uh, that has been reported, They've used uh, fluoro, fluoro sequencing. So this involves a chemical modification of a peptide. This will label the um, certain residues with a fluorescent dye. Um, you can then proceed by Edmund degradation, removing the amino acid residue closest to the end terminus. You can then get a readout with fluorescence. So if our first one is assisting with a red dye, we'll get a fluorescent readout matched to a red dye. The issue with this technique is that these fluorescent dyes, obviously they can't label all of the amino acids, so you end up limiting yourself to what kind of the length of peptide that you can um, sequence with this. Um, so our workflow modifies this uh, by using a metal binding uh, peptide that is specific for an amino acid side chain. This can then be uh, bound with our, our cycle number barcode here. This reacts with the N-terminus. We then will get our amino acid bond to our metal barcode here, our metal barcode uh, with the peptide, and then is bound to be our cycle number, our metal barcode. We then proceed through Edmund degradation. This will give us give off our our molecule that will pass through the our solid state nanopore, and will give us a readout that will give us uh, it will give us the readout of this metal bound metal bound uh, barcode to the amino acid, so we know what amino acid is bound. It will also give us the barcode for the cycle number, so we know which uh, number in the chain this amino acid is as a way of sequencing. Um, this can then be repeated for each individual amino acid. And then using a machine learning algorithm, we can infer um, the amino acid that can't be labeled uh, with very high accuracy. This new workflow obviously moves away from the fluorescent sequencing strategy. And these solid state nanoports that we're using, um, they have some advantages over the biological ones, including being more tunable, and they're also more durable. As we're doing Edmund degradations, we need these to be able to resist uh, those harsh chemicals that we that are used in this process. We'll also be creating new amino acid-specific uh, biorthogonal reactions. So these are shown here in the bottom right. This picture here is lysine, cysteine, and tyrosine as a few examples of what these reactions might look like. Um, this can be this is the fluorophyll that you could use to kind of confirm that this is bound, or you can replace that uh, with a metal peptide there, and then that will react with your side chain. These are just three of the residues that we're currently working on and that have been reported in literature. Um, there's other ones that we're also developing. Um, this will also allow us a uh, improvement in the identification of post-translational modifications um, compared to previous uh, methods for uh, protein sequencing. And this also prevents signal loss caused by fluorescent uh, dye degradation during Edmund steps. The uh, fluoro sequencing, the chemicals used in the Edmund degradation would degrade the dye, so you get a loss of a signal when your fluorescence readouts. This would um, limit the length of the peptide that you could sequence just due to the degradation of those dyes. Um, that is an overview of what we're working on in the lab. And thank you for listening.